Well, thank you so much for being here, Mayor. Thank you for having me. Now, I want to start by asking you, what are you most proud of in terms of what you have accomplished during your first term as mayor? Well, I, you know, I ran uh, to be mayor uh, following uh, working in Mayor Pete's administration because of all of the progress we'd been able to make in the last decade, uh, including uh, investment and population growth, and uh, been pleased that uh, during my administration, we've reached uh, the uh, fastest population growth uh, since the 1950s. Uh, our, we've had the most private investment in city history. And, and of course, uh, we've been able to turn around our staffing shortages that have plagued our, our police department uh, for many years and as long as I've worked in the city. Uh, and now we, we look to be fully staffed this summer and, and uh, no end in sight there. Unlike there's some, been some previous times where uh, we'd kind of reached that number and then we were facing a, a number of retirements there shortly after. So uh, we're in a good spot uh, in, in those places. And we were able to do this all in the face of, of headwinds of you know, once in a century pandemic, uh, record inflation, uh, 50 years of record inflation, supply chain shortages. So we've been able to do this all with all these challenges uh, kind of facing us at once. Now, as you talk about that population growth, to what factors do you attribute it? Well, I mean, there are a lot of pieces to this. Uh, we know that uh, in, in today's economy, it's not uh, people following smokestacks. It's uh, employers following people. And so the, the most critical thing is our, our economic development strategy for the last number of years uh, has been focused on making South Bend a place to both uh, retain our residents who grow up here so they don't move uh, out of our area or they don't necessarily have, you know, they don't feel like they have to move out of the area. This is a great community to stay in, uh, but also attract uh, people from the outside and make sure uh, people see South Bend as a, as a destination a place not just to visit, but also to, to set their roots uh, here. So a lot of the pieces that we've been doing, you know, whether it's uh, Mayor Pete's smart streets to, to revitalize downtown, uh, our historic investments in parks and trails and, and other pieces. Uh, and, and this also is in concert with the state's economic development strategy. Uh, Placemaking is one piece uh, that uh, we share with the state in terms of priority of how do we move our, our city and our state forward. You mentioned being part of the Buttigieg administration. You're both chief of staff as well as director of community investment. How is it different being mayor compared to being a member of the mayor's staff or team? Well, you know, uh, I, I enjoyed the, in some ways the anonymity uh, of being <laughs> a staff person uh, in the administration. So uh, I wasn't as recognized on the street as I am now. Uh, but uh, I've enjoyed uh, stepping into the role, but, you know, getting the, to get to know the residents more. Uh, you know, people will come up to you and say, Mayor, I have this idea, or Mayor, can you help me uh, with this or that? And so uh, that's certainly a new uh, part of, of the, the role of, of city government for me. Uh, and also just, uh, you know, uh, at one point uh, you can make a recommendation to the elected official. I'd worked for Mayor Pete. I'd worked for uh, Senator Cantwell of Washington State. Uh, but ultimately, they were, the, they were the elected official and they had to make the decision. And so uh, it is a, you know, a little bit different where you realize you're making the decision. You're not just recommending or, or uh, you know, providing a, a path. Uh, you're, you're the one actually uh, you know, signing the document, making the decision, making the call. And, uh, you know, if usually the decisions that make it up to the mayor's office, even as chief of staff, the easy ones don't come up. Uh, the easy ones get handled lower down in the, in the administration. And so uh, there's always some trade-off uh, that's coming in the decisions that, that you make. And you have to make it and, and uh, move forward. So would it be fair to describe you as an introvert and a policy wonk who was committed enough to the city to be willing to step into this role and make those hard decisions? Well, P you, people find this hard to believe, uh, you know, on personality uh, tests. I'm actually an extrovert. I'm just a quiet extrovert. <laughs> quiet extrovert. Uh, and, and I do listen uh, quite a bit. So I enjoy being around people uh, and enjoy, uh, you know, going to events and things. Uh, and so that part actually helps me in this role, uh, being a kind of a, a secret extrovert in that way, because I am quieter uh, th than many, but uh, uh, I do enjoy being around people. So that's helpful, because this job really is about uh, being around people and, and talking to people. All right, draw energy from that. Now, if you had to pick one, and I know this is difficult, what would you say is the most important issue facing the city of South Bend at this particular moment? 
Well, we know that uh, you know, public safety has been a top priority of mine since day one, and it is uh, on the minds of, of our residents. Uh, we've seen, uh, not just here, but, but across the country, uh, we've seen an uptick uh, of violent crime uh, over the past number of years. Uh, fortunately here, uh, since 2019, our part one offenses last year were down uh, by 11%. Uh, from when we 2019. say part one offenses, what does that mean? Those are the most serious ones. So you know, you think of shoot, you know, you think of shootings, aggravated assaults, uh, you know, robberies, just the serious crimes as opposed to petty. Part two uh, are, are more of the the petty crimes. Like petty theft. Yeah, yeah. And so, so you see some progress, but what would you do to continue that progress and make the city safer and make residents? feel even more safe here in South Bend. Right, I mean, so, you know, we've got uh, a great uh, police department and we're gonna be fully staffed for the first time in, in many years. Uh, we've brought on, uh, in my administration, 76 new officers uh, over the past uh, three and a half years. Uh, you know, a third of them are uh, women and, and uh, people of color. And so we're proud that we're gonna have the team and the police department that is no longer just trying to keep the lights on and running from call to call. We're gonna be able to do some of the more uh, proactive things and we've heard uh, things like traffic uh, being an issue and, and so uh, we haven't been able to, people have noticed, uh, we haven't been able to, to do much traffic enforcement uh, while we were short staffed, uh, but now we'll have some capacity to make sure that you know, this isn't looking to, to bring uh, you know, a ticketing system, but it is to make sure that uh, drivers know they can't just drive recklessly across our city and, and expect uh, not to face some consequences. So things like that, uh, you know, expand our strategic focus unit and, and other pieces. So we've got our department uh, that, that's gonna be in, in the best shape it's been in in a long time. Uh, but then we've also working to bring the community on board. And so, you know, no matter how many officers we have, they can't be everywhere 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so that's where, where the community really comes in, make sure that we're partnering to solve our big issues uh, in the community. And so that's another piece we're gonna be able to do more of, uh, get the community resource officers engaged and, and working with neighbors to, to bring uh, our community together and, and make this so that every neighborhood is, is safe in South Bend. Uh, there are other pieces uh, that down, you know, we've had the group violence intervention uh, program. We're continuing that and, and that's in a good spot. Uh, so it's really gonna take all these pieces coming together to get us to where we wanna be. And then long-term, we need long-term solutions too. We know, uh, you know, a lot of the crime is happening in certain areas of the city that are also experiencing uh, economic uh, struggles. And so figuring out how to build those opportunities and extend those opportunities across the entire community will get us to where we wanna go in the long term. Seems like some of those more serious offenses that do make the headlines are uh, related to guns or personal beefs turn deadly. Uh, there's a limit to what a mayor can do. What can we do about that? Well, like I said, uh, there, are, there is a limit. Uh, you know, we were disappointed uh, last year uh, when the state the legislature uh, got rid of, you know, instituted a, a permitless carry system. Um, that was something our law enforcement uh, community uh, spoke out against, removing that, because that was one way to help keep uh, guns out of the wrong hands. Those who shouldn't be having guns, uh, would, uh, it, w it was a system in which they could use and make sure that uh, you know, they were keeping our community safe. The, gun the wide access to guns is a problem. I mean, this is a problem, not just in South Bend, it's a problem in, in our country. And uh, unfortunately, the mayor uh, of South Bend doesn't have a lot of levers to, to affect that. Uh, you know, the state and the federal levels uh, are really have the control uh, on gun regulations and uh, common sense policies. But, you know, I will continue as mayor to advocate for those common sense measures to be enacted at both the state and federal levels. We saw a little bit of progress last year at the federal level. They, they got uh, something done for the first time in, in decades. So. Uh, you know, there's always hope that, you know, everyone says, oh, well, you know, pointing to the state, nothing will ever get done. Well, we did see some progress uh, last year, and, and we hope we can continue to build on this because this is a problem in America, and, uh, you know, we've got to figure out a better way forward. Now, you mentioned the fact that people in some neighborhoods may lack economic opportunities. One of the planks in your platform really is to build our neighborhoods uh, block by block. How do you do that and really support those neighborhoods, give people a sense of 
belonging and a sense of pride? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we're, we've been doing a lot of work with the neighborhood associations and, and the, those groups, the, the development groups, uh, nonprofit groups that, that they're associated with different neighborhoods. So, you know, there's 466 Works in the Southeast, there's the NNN in the Northwest, there are others too, South Bend Heritage, uh, and, and work with them. Well, I mean, really, uh, you know, when you think of housing, for example, and, and making housing affordable, uh, that, that really is about a, a government role coming in because the market is not providing the housing we need. And, uh, you know, we believe in free market principles, uh, but there are, uh, there are classic cases where the market just doesn't work. Uh, and that's, you know, this, this, is not, this has not been a controversial uh, fact uh, for many years, uh, although sometimes it seems like we forget this in, in, in different political debates. But there are times in which the market just doesn't do what it needs to do. People need places to live. Uh, and if the market's not providing that, we've got to figure something out. And oftentimes that means some level of government intervention. And so, of course, we need the state and federal uh, levels to come in. They have, you know, they have the big dollars uh, to come in and really move the needle. But we're doing what we can with the dollars we have to uh, get more housing uh, into our neighborhoods and also uh, more investment into, uh, you know, a more neighborhood business, uh, local business community and ecosystem. So all of those pieces come together, uh, you know, uh, on the... The Midwest side, the uh, Kennedy Park neighborhood, you know, the big investment into the, the Dr. Martin Luther King Dream Center, um, that we see that as a catalytic, uh, you know, there's, it's great to have the community center, the park, uh, but also what that's going to encourage uh, in the surrounding neighborhoods, investment in housing, investment in, uh, in business corridors. Now you mentioned the market not working. Essentially, are developers saying, look, it costs a certain amount and more than ever to build a home and if I build it here I, I'm not going to get a good return on my investment. So if that's happening you mentioned that the city can do things what what specifically sure. could we do? Yeah so you know it, it, that's exactly right it's not uh, not getting a good enough return it's in many cases not getting a return at all it's just not it just doesn't pencil out and so uh, you know, of course, we do things uh, like home financing programs where, where we do help cover that gap. Uh, we have loan, loan programs where we help, you know, get access to uh, low-cost financing to help uh, cover those gaps. Uh, but then the big thing that we did, uh, you know, it, it, over the last year or so is what was called the, the New Neighborhood Homes Initiative. And that uh, did a couple things. One, it uh, removed the uncertainty and some of the costs associated with connecting the utility. So connecting you know, new houses to uh, our, our water and sewer utility it is a source of cost that sometimes can tip a project from uh, you know, working or not working uh, on, on math. So we, uh, we did uh, cover uh, you know, up to a certain amount for infill housing uh, to uh, you know, take that, off, that burden off of, of uh, new development uh, in neighborhoods. Uh, as well as we, we brought forth uh, what were called pre-approved plans. This is another part where uh, that can generate a cost that could tip a project o over the top. So having plans uh, you know, that are, meet the city's codes, all of those things, then uh, the, the developers don't have to necessarily go out and pay an architect uh, for this house. They can adapt these plans and, and build uh, on, on lots in our neighborhoods. And so we're doing everything we can to to take, squeeze all the costs we can out of the equation. Uh, and uh, then, but nevertheless, the, oftentimes there still needs to be some level of either financing help or, or some level of subsidy. Now, another thing, of course, that attracts people to a city are good public schools. This is something that the mayor actually does not control in the city of South Bend, but what is it that the mayor can do to be part of this? Yeah, I mean that this is uh, something we you know we need to work with our schools because our, our schools are so critical to to our future um, and the future of our neighborhoods. So we we've heard strong neighborhoods, strong schools, they go hand in hand. So just because they're separate entities, we've got to find ways to work together. Um, and, and the way we, we've uh, we've been working toward that goal is uh, seeing where we fit in. Where does the city fit in? And uh, you know, we, we have pushed, uh, you know, pre-K access, making sure students are, are ready uh, to learn in, in uh, K through 12 on day one. Uh, you know, they're not, some students are not coming in at a disadvantage, so getting access to, to pre-K is, is critical. And we've been able to increase uh, about 500 seats, uh, pre-K seats, uh, over, uh, you know, over the past few years with partners, uh, both schools and uh, the United Way. 
then also looking to what are opportunities outside of school, you know, after school programming uh, with our parks and, and recreation team, summer programming when they're out of school, uh, and then looking toward as they're, they're getting ready to enter into a career, making sure they, they have the connections and the, the ability to, to move into our workforce. And so th that's another piece where, where we're, we, workforce development, working with our schools on, on uh, technical education as well. Those are pieces where, where we uh, fit in. Uh, but uh, th there's uh, even more than that is figuring out, uh, you know, they've, they've got a tough time, uh, the schools. Uh, you know, the, the, the state legislature values choice, uh, which is, you know, that's a philosophical choice that our legislature is making. Um, and, uh, you know, between vouchers and, and a dollar charter school, uh, we're, we're a city that has too many school buildings uh, for the population. It was built for uh, when we were a larger population, and back then uh, uh, families were having more kids. And so now we're, we have, you know, we're growing again, we'll, you know, we'll get back up there, but we still have a, an issue of, uh, you know, families aren't having as many kids uh, as they used to. And so we don't have the number, we don't have the need for the number of square footage of school space that we did uh, previously. And so what's, what's, tr what's, what's difficult is that's, that's an obvious, uh, but as the schools uh, close spaces, uh, the state has allowed charters to come in and, and buy them for a dollar. Now, they'll argue, well, taxpayers paid for this, so that it should be able to be a school. But on some level, we've got to come up with a rational uh, approach to this where we have the right number of schools for our city and uh, we make sure that uh, our schools are able to succeed. So that's, uh, you know, that takes partnerships at the state level. Uh, this is, uh, in, and that's, those are conversations uh, we need to keep uh, having and make sure that we're not pulling the rug out from under cities like South Bend. As soon as a school closes because there aren't enough children for the school and then a new charter opens in the same building perpetuating the same we issue. haven't reduced <laughs> yeah, we haven't reduced the the, the square Numbers. footage of, of schools uh, but you know this we, we got to work with our school system to make sure that we're competing for the students there is a, there is a competition here and uh, there's no reason why uh, we can't we can't win that so if there was one last thing you would want voters to know before they make their decision, what would it be or, or is something you'd like to th them to think about as they head to the polls? It, we're at a place where South Bend is a place that people want to be, where people are moving to, and uh, we have the opportunity to be, you know, the Austin of the Midwest or the Portland of the Midwest or the, those mid-sized town uh, that uh, really uh, have have that uh, you know that kind of buzz that, that kind of uh, feel so it's very exciting uh, where we are right now and uh, we just got to keep all of the things that we've been working toward and not just me not just mayor pete the mayor since uh, studebaker closed have been doing their part to get to this place it's a privilege and an honor to be mayor at a time when we have momentum these uh, investments are are uh, bearing fruit and uh, you know the sky's the limit for the future and, and I look forward to see what's next but we do have to come together as a community to make that happen. All right well thank you that's all the time we have but thank you so much for being here. Thank you.